Hi YouTube, I've just cycled from Land's End to Johnny Groats and I'm currently at the Seaview Hotel at Johnny Groats and on this video I'm going to give you some tips. Man I looked tired at the start of that video after covering 900 miles in 9 days but here I am nice and refreshed to talk about these subjects. Training programs Gormantura, Strava, clothing and many more. Before you start the event you need to make sure you are physically fit enough to complete it. The best way to do this is to create a training program. The easiest way is to draw a monthly calendar and have an existing extra box at the end of the week. Next, in your existing box write down your daily mileage and your weekly mileage you feel comfortable with at the current time and this needs to be realistic. Once this is done, work out how many months you've got to train for. Personally for me, it's three. At the end of your training program, work out how many miles on average you'll be riding within a day on your event. Mine is 90 miles. And also give yourself a challenging high mileage week and I put 300 miles. Then build up your mileage week by week till you start to feel uncomfortable. The next stage is to put your mileage up and down to make it feel comfortable. Such as 50 miles one week, down to 45 and then up to 60. This will regulate your mileage so you don't get overtired and remember to taper around about one to two weeks before the event. On a graph it should look like this. Once you have written your training program, fill out the individual boxes throughout the weeks, see if you hit your targets and you will be good to go. Navigation next, and I really do recommend you get yourself a Garmin Edge, specifically one with a coloured screen. Here's how to plan your route on Strava, starting from scratch. But I'm supposed you're getting bored in my voice now, so here's Kyle. Strava in one minute, let's do this. Dashboard, my route. Create new route. Enter start location, click on right. Click on start point. Click on finish point and Strava will calculate a route from known cycling routes. Click on save and enter on a name. For example, leg 9. Click on export. Select Garmin type. For the Garmin Tourer, click on 800 or 810. Next, click on download TCX. and it will appear on your screen. Click on Downloads and drag and drop into the Garmin new file. Man, I've got a headache. Next, how to set up your Garmin Edge Tourer. Where to? Save. Courses. Set course, e.g. leg 9. And press just ride. Also, if you are cycling more than 90 miles a day, I really do recommend getting yourself an extra waterproof battery pack. Two days before the event started, we moved from the north of England all the way to the very tip of the south, where we pitched up camp. With our military 9x9 tents, camp beds, kitchen area, showers and toilet on camp, and free Wi-Fi. The next day was all about bike maintenance. This is the biggest thing you need to do before you start the event. Get your bike serviced. If you need to send it to a bike shop, do so, but if you can do it yourself, strip it to the nines. Completely stripped my bike and I had nothing wrong with it for the whole entire event. The next tip is map briefing. Make sure everyone's there, including the cyclists and your staff who are helping you, so you know what's going on and they do too. Talk about the ground, such as the elevation, the distance, and the towns and cities that you'll go through. Then the next day we moved down to Land's End where it was happy snap time. After the happy snaps we moved from Land's End down the course all the way to our first water stop. I recommend getting a water stop or a break every 25 miles. The reason why is if you do 100 miles a day you approximately burn 350,000 calories on the bike. The second reason why is to check your blokes or your females to see if everyone is there. 
also give a quick bike inspection. I was lucky enough to have a full team helping us out. We only have five to six cyclists on the ride, but we had a full team of 13. Apparently it's fashionable to have your full family on a YouTube video, so here's my wife. From Prayers and Beeble, past Laddock Wood, up into Gorse Moor Nature Reserve, down into Callington, finish at Crown Hill, Plymouth. Where I had a red face. So my next recommendation is these two items. A big breakfast and into leg two. Elevation. 100 miles and approximately 3,200 kilocalories. Starting at Crown Hill Plymouth onto Dartmoor National Park. On the higher section we hit bad weather with 50 metres visibility from fog and rain. So my next recommendation are bike lights. If visibility is very bad, place a safety vehicle in front of you with its warning hazards on, on small country roads. The centre of Exeter and into Colompton. My next point is clothing. We went from terrible rain and fog all the way to blazing sunshine at our 50 mile point. Daddy, can I go on YouTube? Okay. Daddy, I want you to do a graphic wall video. Bike it, please. Okay then. Head over. Cycling helmet. Sunglasses. Oh, Gore-Tex jacket. Cycling teaser. With Land's End's to John O'Groats written on it. Also, a set of Allen keys, punch repair kit and... Under t-shirt. Gloves. Calm yourself. Yes, gloves. Summer and winter and also sleeves. And... Bib charges. I definitely recommend you get yourself a good set of cycling shorts. Tried and tested around about 100 miles. Also, overshoes and Gore-Tex. Socks. SPD shoes that you can clip in and repeat all this kit and equipment again if you can in a grab bag if you need to change clothes. Am I done? Yeah, go on. From Columpton, Hollywell Lake, Langford, Budville, and then the last climb up Buncombe Wood, Bridgewater, and finish at Glastonbury. In the morning before we set off on leg three. Sadly, one of the cyclists didn't feel well and couldn't carry on. So my next recommendation is emergency transport home or to the nearest hospital. And always make sure you have communications, such as a mobile phone, to your safety vehicle or the emergency services. Leg 3 Elevation 102 miles and over 3000 kilocalories from Glastonbury, Wells, West Hartree, Winford, Bristol, Bradley Stork, across Second Seven Crossing with the cycling route. Monmouth, St. Waynards, Hereford, next to Leominster, Richards Castle. My wife got bored so my sister had to take over. So next, after cycling 100 miles a day for three days, aches and pains start to occur. So my next tip is stretching and rolling out your legs at the end of each day for at least 10 minutes. Believe me, you will feel 10 times better the next day. On an average day, we got out of bed at six and started riding by seven and finished round about five o'clock. So administration is key. After stretching, move on to the bike. Washing, greasing and oiling, tyre pressure, which I'll go on to later. Next, shower, eat, navigational check, garment set up, and then the most important point, go to sleep. Pictures for Facebook and into leg four. Easier on the elevation today, 103 miles, and plenty of calories. From Ludlow, Market Drayton, through the centre of Warrington, into Lee, and stayed overnight in Salford. 
By day four, we were working really well as a team. The key to working well is staying within a group, no matter the cyclist's capabilities. Another advantage is streamlining stroke drafting. The front cyclist blocks the airflow, while the other cyclist behind him is made easier the further you go down the pack. If you want to get a move on, place your strong riders to the front and your less capable riders to the rear. Next to test scores, starting from Lee onto leg 5. The easiest elevation so far, the lowest mileage was 71 miles, but it was a Sunday. From Lee, Horwich, Chorley, through Preston, Garstang, east of Lancaster, through the centre of Kendall, to Pound Farm Caravan Park. We went from built up urban areas all the way to rolling country roads. When we were halfway through the ride, one of the bikes had a major fault. We needed to get the chain, the cassette and the back wheel changed. So my next recommendation, if possible, is to carry a spare bike, tools on your safety vehicles. If possible, like we did, send the bike forward to a local bike shop to get it repaired. Leg six, elevation, 90 miles. It didn't start as well as I expected, with small cart tracks barely big enough to fit our safety vehicle down. Also, it felt like I was on a cycle cross route, with my poor carbon bike taking all the pounding. of Windermere, Kirkstone Pass. Here is where the Lake District came into its own, with our first and last climb of the day. Once we got to the top, we had our second major bike breakdown. The poor Condor couldn't carry on, so sadly he had to drag his Cannondale Super 6 out of the back of the van. What a shame. More cheesy picks. That's my bike lent against the table. And off we went. And straight away we had this lovely gem to greet us. Matterdale End. Through the centre of Carlisle to Gretna. Another white post and it's happy snap time. When we got here, we weren't just greeted by Scotland Welcomes You, there were many other cyclists attempting this event, which was a big morale boost. We've just entered Scotland now, so I think we need a Scottish accent. Here's Alison. From Gretna Green to Lockerbie. From a high point to a low, being in the Lake District to handrail in the M74 was a big change. From lovely rolling countryside to straight roads and concrete bridges. Johnston Bridge finishing at Muffet. Seven. Elevation, 110 miles. A great start to the day with a picturesque climb. And here is my next recommendation. Film and take as many pictures as you can. From SLR cameras to GoPros, even your camera phones. This is a once in a lifetime event and I'll always remember it. Tweed Shores, east of Penwick and into Edinburgh. My next tip is the one sign. Edinburgh has very good off-road cycle routes throughout the centre. These consist of old train lines changed into footpaths. My Garmin took me through this route, what felt a bit crazy, but spot on. To help, throughout, the one signs were pointing in the right direction. Then we hit the seventh bridge, with a cycling route up one side.
At this point, I was getting frantic calls off the safety vehicle because it is impossible to follow cyclists through Edinburgh Centre. So if you are in the same situation, ask your vehicle to park on the north side of the bridge. Cowden Beef, King Ross, through Perth, finishing at Dunkeld. Day 8 today, the riders, cyclists heading from Dunkett to Ivernes. Elevation and 102 miles. Leaving Dunkeld to Pitlochry. Cycling on small tarmac roads, skirting the A9, the day didn't start off too bad. Into Cairngorms National Park. When we were climbing to the highest section and further, the roads and cycle paths went from bad to worse, with small stones causing constant punctures with the low grade summer tyres. So my next recommendation is winter tyres, such as Continental Gator Skins. I was lucky not to have a puncture for the whole event. Also keep your tyre pressure between 100 and 110 psi. Tornerton, then Moy, and down the A9 dual carriageway to Inverness. Which I would not recommend. The last day, leg 9. Elevation, and 119 miles. My next tip is to check the weather forecast the night before. It was predicted we would have 24 mile an hour wind speeds about mid afternoon. So to avoid the weather, we decided to set off at 0600 in the morning. Starting off at Inverness, we also changed our food and water stops to every 20 miles to take on nutrition, change clothing due to the high mileage and the weather. Into Wick. Today is the last day and about 18 miles to finish up. This was the last stop with the weather really kicking in with cold and fatigue setting in but every few miles we saw another La Jogger setting off from John O'Groats which was a big morale boost Finishing at John O'Groats And we even picked up two other cyclists along the way Another white horse and I would like to say it was happy snap time but it really wasn't So my next and last recommendation is to stay at the Seaview Hotel A warm shower and a big meal was a great finish to the event <laughs> 